Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Zareth Prevails, a Grand Arena story. 5v5 is back and it is still awesome, but because it's the start of a new season, I had a couple announcements that I want to make, and so we'll touch on those briefly and get to the match. First off, as has become the custom, I wanted to draw attention to the fact that I made Kyber again last season. I only meant 9 and 3 last time, uh, so I'm dubbing that as semi-legit Kyber. It was 3v3, so it's a little bit of a uh, learning curve and everything, but I make no excuses. 9 and 3 is the worst season I've had so far. Uh, however, it does add to the tally. I have a total of 5 kyber now um, all of them legit except for the last one which is only as i said semi-legit and i know that i normally do a montage to celebrate these things but i have been sick and i just didn't have the time or the energy to be able to put one of those together and so this is what you get and if you have to squint at it a little bit because i made it on my phone then i make no apologies it is big enough for what you need now, what does a man do when he's had his least successful ever Grand Arena Championship season? He starts a Patreon. That's right, folks. I just started a Patreon about a day ago, and as of the recording of this, I have zero patrons. So, uh, if anyone wants to help me amend that situation, I would be honored. It has been quite the privilege and humbling experience, honestly, to create content that people have enjoyed. I have grown the channel up to nearly 800 subscribers at this point, and I know that that's kind of small potatoes for a lot of different YouTubers, but for me, that is way bigger than I had ever expected this channel to grow. And so I just really appreciate everyone who, you know, watches it, who has supported me in the past just by joining my Discord, uh, by listening to the podcast, by hitting the like, by considering a like, by, uh, you know, just giving me feedback, honestly. It, it's, it's been so much fun interacting with everyone, and, uh, you know, it's, it's been a really great experience. And the fact of the matter is, all this content creation does take time, and it does take resources. And I would love to be able to continue to provide content that is increasingly better, and I just can't do that without the resources part, frankly. Um, you know, I don't have enough subscribers yet to get ad revenue on YouTube, but frankly, I think I like the idea of Patreon more, honestly, because it, le it lets me interact with people more. Uh, you know, I've had a lot of really great interactions with different people on our Discord server, and, you know, it's it's been a lot of fun, and I would just love to continue to do that, frankly. So, no pressure at all to join, it's all completely voluntary, and I'm sure that a lot of people have already just skipped to my video, uh, you know, of the match, and that's just fine. Uh, to those of you who are interested, I'm going to leave a link at the bottom of my video, and, uh, you know, just in the video description, so please just check that out. Uh, there are a lot of different cool things and perks to joining up including access to the arena bot which i am totally ripping off of my buddy indigo who also has a patreon so check out his patreon as well he he's got a lot of great ideas so uh anyways i the arena bot is great because it dms you the, the moment that you fall in either your squad arena or your fleet arena it's a really helpful tool you also get access to the private discord server for my patrons that i'm going to be hosting uh, and i'll be having a lot of different really strong players in there as well to provide advice and perspective on the game and depending on your level of investment you can even get your own private discord coaching channel so there's also a lot of other perks involved uh, so please check out the link in the video description and thank you all so much once again for making all of this possible let's move on to the match so we are in group one match one of the current 5v5 grand arena championships and that's really exciting i have really really enjoyed the 5v5 format without ships and we don't have to worry about ships so you can see my opponent has malevolence and we just don't even have to care about how that's going to impact us not even a little bit it, that's not going to impact us gp wise match wise anything so we're going to look at the stats you can see this is the hot bot this is a stat bot that you can pull up and it has way too many stats to really show you guys all so We'll break it down a little bit. My opponent here has had a slightly less illustrious Grand Arena Championship career uh, than I have, and uh, illustrious is a fun word to use for myself, so I'm going to use it whenever I can. Um, and I uh, also don't apologize for that. 
Uh, so I, I have had more success on most fronts in Grand Arena, though. That doesn't really tell us anything. It, it, it could just mean that my opponent just completely ignored 3v3. So uh, looking at this other stat sheet, I do beat them in Zetas. I have uh, more gear, uh, more geared characters, at least, than my opponent does, and that's a huge piece of it uh, that in this current stage of Grand Arena Championship. Now, the thing that my opponent does beat me at pretty soundly is their number of relics. Uh, High-end relics, uh, they just, they completely destroy me. And, you know, that that's probably the big difference maker in terms of uh, how much uh, GP we have. I do have them beat extremely soundly in, by mods. Um, <laughs> like, I, I double most of what their total mods are. And so, you know, that, that was going to be a pretty big difference maker as well, because GP doesn't actually factor mod speed into its equation so you know that that's a pretty big uh, advantage that I have and I needed to make sure that I was able to uh, take advantage of that so uh, you know, taking a look at my opponent's front lines here, you know, we have to clear two zones to have a full picture of what kind of uh, squads we're going to be dealing with. And the, the first shot was just not that intimidating. Uh, the, the one thing I do want to point out is my opponent did have a full seven star gear 12 Hux, but, but he didn't have a Zeta, so that was nice. And then he put Jedi Revan on defense, which I never ever see him on defense at all, unless it's on my alt, because people do a lot of dumb things on my alt. Uh, against my alt so you know that 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 was pretty surprising to me uh, but uh, I was happy enough with the teams that I was faced with so uh, you know one thing I want to point out here in 5v5 is that it's always a race to see which B level teams you can use. If you can use all two or three of your B level teams to take out their B level teams, or you know, it may, in rare occasions, maybe A level teams, uh, then you know that your meta teams are going to do the work, the heavy lifting on their own. Like they're they're going to solve problems anyways. It's trying to fit in these uh, kind of marginal teams. And so my first matchup is going to be with Imperial Troopers against Imper Palpatine. I don't know if you guys have ever seen me use troopers against Palpatine. It's a pretty old, uh, age-old trick. I used to use it against uh, Palpatine plus Treya, actually, back in the day, back when, you know, if Palpatine is the lead, uh, you can actually beat that team fairly soundly. Uh, so, really, it, it's pretty pretty same old trick. Uh, you just <laughs> have, have start go first, he gives everyone buffs, gives them turn meter, and uh, they run the board before I can finish explaining how they work. So, uh, you know, pretty easy, 60 banners, off to a good start in 5v5, and hopefully we can do the same to this poor Karth team that doesn't even have a Zeta on Zalbar, and uh, you know, the Zalbar doesn't even have tenacity uh, mods on him at all, He's he's got, I think, he, I think he had a speed set, actually, uh, which was a little surprising, he wasn't that fast anyways, um, you know, and I, it, it, was, it was pretty apparent that my opponent just didn't really care that much about uh, mods, uh, you know, and I know that my opponent's going to be watching this, and I don't mean any insult to them uh, when I say this. Uh, I just, you know, it, it, if they had prioritized mods, they would have more of them and, you know, higher quality ones. Um, so, you know, that that's just an advantage that I have in this particular game mode, and I wanted to make sure that I pressed it home as much as I could. Now, you can see I'm taking Jedi Training Ray here. I do consider it to be a B-level team. It is one of the best B-level team killers in the game, honestly, um, and I had thought about taking it against the First Order, but I decided I could do the First Order mirror match if I wanted to, and I just wanted to try to control the scene here, and you see that I'm kind of just jumping around from character to character here. Um, uh, Jedi Training Ray is really kind of a control team, and the way you use control, really, uh, on a lot of these teams is making sure that, you know, you can debuff whenever you want, uh, which you can see the Resistance Trooper is constantly just taking off Zalbar's taunt. Uh, you also want to be able to stun whenever you want. You can daze people so that they can't counterattack, things like that, and so I'm getting a lot of stuns off, I'm getting a lot of hits, and if you note, my opponent only got one hit off the entire match, and that was a stun on BB-8 that didn't, didn't do damage. So 60 total banners here, pretty easy to win that one. And now we can see what's in the back zone and have a better picture of the total puzzle to try to you know piece together what teams I wanted to be able to counter. So this was not the news that I was hoping for. A uh, Padme team with loaded relics and a General Skywalker team uh, w without a seven star 
uh, General Skywalker, which is great, but it's still a problem because those clones are extremely strong. So let's talk for a minute about what teams I wanted to counter with what so that I would be able to plan accordingly for whatever's in the back zone and not use the wrong teams. You know, still want to have the right teams available to counter whatever is back there. So we're going to assume that the back zone is General Grievous and Darth Revan. I, I assumed that there was probably going to be one of those, probably not both, uh, but you got to plan for the worst, right? So uh, first off, it, it was really obvious. First Order was going to be taken out in a mirror match with my own first First order, I saw no reason why that wouldn't work. Uh, the General Skywalker team was going to be taken out with Commander Luke because Commander Luke probably counters the least meta teams out of all of my other meta squads. And uh, so then you have to take into account, okay, so Darth Revan is going to be used against their uh, General Grievous, most likely. Their Darth Revan wasn't super strong, so I was pretty confident that my Padme would be able to take them out. And that meant that I would probably be able to use Treya against, in the worst case scenario, I'd be able to use Treya against Padme. That does work most of the time for me. Uh, it, it's, it can get a little bit dicey, but then that, that would open the doors for me to be able to use Jedi Revan in a mirror match. And really, that, that was probably my best bet. Even though I want to use Jedi Revan, usually against General Grievous, I thought that I had the squads to be able to uh, sink into, uh, you know, all these different possibilities even if I guessed wrong. It, and then it occurred to me I could check on swgoh.gg and see what my opponent's uh, past uh, 5v5 experience was. And in, in the six matches that it showed, it had my opponent uh, using Phoenix and Rogue One at, in some, at some point on their board. And that, that was consistent. And so I, I was really hoping that that's what we would see, but there was no guarantee. Now, if you want to know how I was able to access those, because it's not showing on swgoh.gg, you can just uh, copy paste and you can see the equals two there. That's week two. Uh, the equal one and equal two are all 5v5. So you can see your opponent's past 5v5 history if you want to. Uh, not, not that it's going to necessarily mean anything. It's been well over a month since they last played those matches. They've probably changed their strategy but it is a tool that you can use if you want to so let's jump back into our matches here and i had one last uh b level team that i needed to kind of just get rid of that i needed to be able to use and uh thankfully my opponent presented the this first order team to me on a platter. Uh, General Hux would have perhaps been a, a lot harder, <laughs> definitely been a lot harder, in fact, if he had uh, his Zeta, but he didn't, so I was going to be able to uh, make make things work against him, I was hoping, and you know, you, you see that I did an AoE with uh, my Kylo, and they all counterattacked, and that was my own bad. Um, the the Hux character does have dominance. That that buff is really strong at, at the start of the match, and it, it made all of the First Order guys counter, so that, that wasn't necessarily awesome, but you can see I already have all of my health and protection back on Kylo. He's really good at regaining that uh, because he has his Zeta, and now I'm just kind of picking on opportunity uh, targets as they come around. Both of these guys are uh, stunned, and what I'm really trying to do now is make sure that I can regenerate all of my health and protection. So I'm just trying to bide my time a little bit, um, and once I can get my First Order Stormtrooper and First Order Executioner back to full health and protection, I can just go crazy and let First Order Executioner do his thing, which I did, and he did, and we got 60 manners. So, so far, Perfect banners for this match, 5v5, is a lot of fun if you want to really explore the different uh, levels of efficiency, which I know that a lot of people don't like that game. Uh, and for them, I have only Scorn and Judgment. <laughs> no, uh, you know, I'm just lucky, honestly, that this is the kind of game that I like to play, and this game mode just happens to reward that currently, so we'll see what happens in the future, but for right now, it is an efficiency game, and trying to maximize banners is really important. Now, it's been a really long time since I've had to use Jedi Revan versus Jedi Revan. That was a miserable meta back in the day, but, uh, I, you know, after a little bit of uh, discussion with people who also remembered those horrible days, uh, we decided that... It, 
I needed to attack Grandmaster Yoda first with Mark, and once you kill him, that triggers Savior. So, you know, that that's one of the important abilities that Jedi Revan had. And then my own uh, Grandmaster Yoda wasn't messing around, and he one-shot Grandmaster Yoda once more. And now we're just trying to do everything we can to take out Jolie before he can revive Grandmaster Yoda. As it happens, my Relic 4... Uh, Grandmaster Yoda, who's modded for offense, just decided to go crazy and one-shot their Jolie as well. So now, uh, I mean, the, the match is already decided. I'm going to win. There, there's no uh, possible other outcome, really. I mean, unless I decide to time out or something like that. Uh, but, you know, we're just trying to maximize our banners at this point. So, you know, uh, all of my other characters are at full health and protection i'm just trying to get bastila up to those levels as well so we can get a perfect 60 and uh, march into the final zone here um, with a perfect score if we can and so that means that trying to call assists to bastila when we can uh, that's going to regenerate 20 percent of her protection and uh, the, I just didn't have the moves available, and their Revan was too squishy. So 59 banners was just fine. Honestly, I was pretty uncertain going into this match, and uh, I guess there wasn't really any need. My Grandmaster Yoda was <laughs> just just on top of things. So uh, cleared the first two zones, only dropped one banner so far, and uh, lo and behold, my scouting had actually <laughs> yielded truth. So... Uh, there was a Jin team and a Hera team, and we'll deal with those later, because I can deal with those with almost any other team. We have to deal with the two biggest threats remaining, which are the General Skywalker team with High Relic clones and this Padme team with also a ton of High Relics. So the way you deal with this team is you use Lightning like you do with a lot of uh, against a lot of teams. And then instead of doing the big debuff from Badstila, you uh, just hit him with the lightning you hit someone with lightning and all their health goes down or protection goes down and then malak immediately is able to hopefully uh just get his life drain kill general uh, or rather jedi skywalker jedi anakin gosh it's hard to keep him straight and uh, once he's gone then the rest of the match is just easy so you know i was able to take out padme as well uh, just because she wasn't as fast as some of my other characters so she had death mark on she didn't get a turn and i was able to take her out and the rest was just clean up so 59 banners there uh, that, that was better than i really had expected sometimes it goes south and you only have malak left after the match is over so uh, you know i found myself pretty fortunate but you know that that is how the match generally goes and now it's time to jump into the Commander Luke versus Six Star General Skywalker matchup, and I have a lot of practice using my Commander Luke team against Seven Star Max Relic. Uh, you know, really crazy geared, uh, or rather modded General Skywalker teams, and so I wasn't really prepared for him to just sit down after my first volley against him, and uh, you know, now we're just trying to take out fives, and you know, it's kind of ironic that the Skywalker sat down so fast and now uh, you know the clones are actually hard to chew through because they're all Relic 7 and they're all uh, kind of part of that meta team that I've come to expect uh, but uh, I, have, I still have a ton of my opening abilities that I'm used to using against uh, you know trying to topple General Skywalker and so uh, it, it was just kind of a, a strange circumstance here uh, you know like my old Ben by the time he stands up again my old Ben is usually taunted by now and he's only used one turn so uh, anyways I was able to make Skywalker sit back down again we took out fives uh, first off that's that's the priority uh, Rex is the next priority we did that and then uh, whoever you want between Echo and Ark I'm sure someone's gonna have exception to that but um, you know I don't I haven't found there to be much of a difference so 53 banners here that was actually pretty painful but that that's what you get for messing with gas um, <laughs> or, or General Skywalker. That wasn't an attempt at humor. I just laughed at it anyways. So uh, anyways, we have cleared that zone. Uh, 53 was not super efficient, but frankly, I don't know how you're going to get better uh, banners than that consistently against that team, you know, regardless of what you do. Uh, so 
you know, moving into this next match, I decided I wanted to use Padme and Undersize. We're not getting an Undersize feat here, but I wanted to get as many banners back as I could here. And I, I figured that my High Relic uh, Padme team would have no problem even Undersized here against this Rogue One team. So, you know, I figured worst case scenario, they knock off all my protection and I'm not able to uh, recoup the banners and I only get 59 or something like that. Um, you know, ne never at any point was I expecting that I might actually lose this match. Um, you want to take out Jin first because she has uh, the ability to revive her characters and uh, so once she's gone then it's just kind of a matter of time before the rest of them fall. And honestly like this this team might have been a little bit more challenging but it it doesn't have uh, it, it wasn't super well modded but but beyond that it, it didn't have super high gear either so you know th there wasn't really that much threatening about it. I I, it was kind of fun to face it. I haven't faced one of these teams for a while, uh, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's good anymore at, at the 5.7 uh, million GP level. Like that, that's probably not going to cut it. So, 62 banners. I did get the perfect uh, amount just because I was able to get protection up, uh, up on my characters before any of the Rogue One guys got their AOEs off. So, uh, happy enough with that. And now we need to figure out the perfect formula to be able to take out this Phoenix team which is also not super well geared or zeted um, and w one thing that i was trying to take into consideration was the feat that required savage and maul to both be on the same team in a grand arena win and so uh, you know i decided this is a good opportunity they both also have double bladed lightsabers and there's also a feat that requires you to kill 12 different characters using double bladed lightsabers so i thought that maybe I don't know, I'd be able to achieve that as well, or at least, you know, start working on it. I think we have like two weeks to be able to do that, so, you know, no huge rush, but it's nice to be able to start working on a feat like that when you have the opportunity. So I did take Thrawn here just because he is the only one capable of uh, protection, uh, regeneration, and I wanted to maximize my banners. So I jumped into here knowing that unless something catastrophic happened, uh, like my phone died or something, that I would win this match going away. And, you know, the, the whole goal here is just to get as many double-bladed lightsaber kills as we can get. And, uh, you know, we don't want to clock out in trying to do that. Uh, but otherwise, we also want to maximize our health and protection. I also needed to stay cognizant of the fact that my Savage did not have that great of mods, and he's only gear 8. So so, you know, he could probably get taken out pretty easy if, if the wrong chain of events were to occur. And so, you know, we're targeting Sabine first, or I was trying to target Sabine first. We have Isolate on Kanan because Kanan is a pain uh, and he can really do a lot of annoying things if you let him. Um, so you, you isolate him, he doesn't taunt, he can't affect the rest of his squad uh, while he's there, uh, but Chopper can still do his thing and he's just as annoying as Kanan, frankly, uh, in the movie and <laughs> and in the game. Uh, they did a great job with his kid. So um, now I, I just decided to annihilate Sabine because she's the only credible threat to taking out uh, Savage. You know, if she was to throw all of her grenades, she could potentially put a bunch of exposes on Savage, and then someone gets a random hit on him and takes him out. That that was kind of unlikely, but decided to play it safe. And now I, I did make a mistake here. I put Isolate on Chopper after he was fractured. So, uh, you know, he is annoying. I don't know if he's quite warrants that level of attention from me. Um, but, you know, what, what I'm trying to do here now is I'm, I'm trying to set up a kill uh, with my double-bladed lightsabers. And so, you know, uh, I did end up deciding to just... Uh, kill Chopper with Treya instead, uh, just because then Thrawn would be able to have a turn and he'd be able to start healing some of this uh, protection. And, um, you know, now, now we're just trying to get Thrawn as many turns as we can. I did decide to annihilate uh, Kanan as well because uh, the clock was starting to wind down a little bit and you really don't want to time out against Phoenix because that's embarrassing and a lot of people watch these videos or at least they have the access to and I just didn't want to have to live that down forever so um, you know timing out against Phoenix is definitely not on the bucket list we just want to avoid that at all costs so 
my mall is at gear 11 and he's really not doing very much damage to anyone um which is i don't know <laughs> to be expected i did get to finally use savage's execute ability or whatever it's called um and it just so happened that he was also able to get the kill on Zeb. So I did get a couple double-bladed uh, kills there. I did get a win with 60 banners, which is even better. And I got a win with Savage and Maul on top of that. So I, I beat that feat as well. So I did manage to get a 1913 out of 1920 as the soft max, uh, which, which is a pretty good result. You know, anything above 1910 is pr pretty fantastic in my opinion. Um, I'm going to make you guys wait to see what my opponent's score was, however. Um, and uh, I just wanted to point out, you see on the top there, the feat that has replaced the undersized victories has uh, gone a little bit strange and sideways and requires you to get uh, a fleet arena wins without using reinforcements and so I was able to game that and able to uh, just plan with one of my shard mates and you see on the number four slot uh, the awful team that he set I was able to get all nine of those uh, pretty quick so I guess that was challenging or something. Uh, it su feels super rewarding, definitely, because everyone's going to get it. And if they don't get it, it's because they can't get a hold of someone who also wants to do it. So, uh, anyways, enough of that. Uh, let's see what my opponent's score was. So, 1913 is a pretty strong score, and we'll see if my opponent can beat that. Here's the old map, and the map after my opponent attacked. And I was pleasantly surprised to see that my uh, two bag zones had held against my opponent. So uh, let's jump into what my defenses had. Uh, my Talzin squad with random bays in there uh, got a defense. My Relic 7 Nest continued her streak of being useless. <laughs> she's not useless, actually. She's great. Um, but she didn't get a defense. Uh, my Newt team with Asajj also got a defense. And my Palpatine team got snubbed. Uh, and then my, my Bounty Hunter team, which is pretty strong uh, got one shot but then grievous took two attempts poor watt got taken out at some point uh but none of the rest of them did and then my skywalker team which you know may have been predictable i don't know uh was able to also hold the line there so uh you know geos got taken out as well which no one really cares about geos no one really wishes them success so uh, i guess i don't really care about that either uh but this is great i was able to get my first win back in 5v5 uh, my next opponent is actually going to be a rematch from a previous match as well and that's going to be a lot of fun so anyways folks thank you so much for watching and it's time for me to leave abruptly so goodbye just remember that in all things Zareth prevails